here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite 80s woman's business power suits favorite nerd. And today we are looking at Make Toys contact shot, which is point blank, right? This guy comes with a few accessories. The accessories do take a while to go through just in terms of explanation. So I don't want to get caught up on too much stuff other than that right now. So he comes with this arm shield bit of business. Nice silver paint on there that uh, this like baby blue uh, plastic and then this gray plastic and then this red cannon, which does remove and then these pieces do flip out. It pegs in to the side of his arm right there. And that connection is on both arms. The red barrel is removable and can be inserted onto the target master by sliding it down with this bit up and locking it in. And this piece does open up here with these little hooks, which can then hook onto the back of his windshield in storage for robot mode using tension on that gray piece of plastic right there uh, to store in robot mode. He also had two very distinct looks, one in the uh, American animation and one in the Japanese animation. The one that you saw in the opening footage is the Japanese look. The American look has this alternate helmet with this uh, crest here. Uh, it's a great sculpt on this helmet, but just be mindful because, I mean, this feels sturdy, but it's just a smaller piece of plastic, so shelf dives and stuff like that could not end well potentially for this, but uh, it, it's well made as it is. And then we have two faces for the American version with the more sunglasses, one straight face, one screaming face, and then we have an alternate screaming face for the Japanese version. In order to swap it out, you just lift up on the helmet and remove this face, insert the new face and put the helmet on. I'm keeping this face on because it is uh, my favorite option. And the reason why is because in the, in the American one, there just wasn't a whole lot of character development on these guys. It was a short season, season four, and they just sort of shoved as many you know characters in there so they could get as many toys sort of represented. And in the Japanese one, like the, the Target Masters were, were pretty cool. Is the Japanese headmasters is my favorite thing in the world, but I thought the Target Master were pretty cool because they were like this like kind of elite, like like special ops force, you know. Whereas the headmasters were kind of the run of the mill, and the Target Masters like almost didn't respect them totally. So it's just a cool dynamic. I prefer the look, and that's the way I'm rolling. You don't have to do that. Lastly, the Target Master, which you can see, uh, uses that Make Toys groove, so to speak, to go into uh, his hand, and that that works really well. And then you can transform them. You just untab the legs. It's a very uh, cool transformation, I think. I, I always am, am kind of taken back by some of these transformations of these like target masters and headmasters that these companies come up with. And just peel the arms off there. And let's see. Rotate this clips in there. So you just rotate that out on the ball peg and then down. Fold the barrel around and plug it back in and then rotate the head and flip this up and that is this guy and you can get it a little bit more flat there I believe and head it has silver paint and blue paint on the face I don't know if you can see that it's on a little tiny ball peg it feels like so you get the swivel a little bit up a little bit down the arms are on ball hinges so you get up and down here at the shoulder, you get the swivel around and you get an elbow that gets you way past 90 degrees. No waist swivel, you do get a bit of an ab crunch, so that's pretty cool just due to transformation. Ooh, be careful. Little ball peg stress me out. And the hips are on ball pegs as well. Uh, once again, limited articulation, but it's a target master, what do you want? You get out to there, front and back, and then the knee is on a hinge at uh, the full range. So pretty cool little fella. So let's talk about this guy. The head is on a ball peg, uh, not my favorite, but that's what it is. You get up to there, down to there, and the swivel, you got a silver finish on the face and then the blue metallic eyes, which is gorgeous. Great job there. And nothing on the head for paint. Articulation is, you know, you get confused dog look if you want it because of the ball peg and skinny neck because of the ball peg, but it's, it's fine. This, it, it does its job, just not my favorite. So let's move on. The waist is on a swivel. So that works well. We'll take that off too, just for, to talk about this guy. That works well, a little tight, but it works okay. We got a hinge here at the bottom. So that gets you an ab crunch and the ab crunch does get you uh, all the way around. So that's good to go. 
Detailings wise, we have this silver paint underneath with this translucent piece of plastic over top. That's striking. It's an interesting look. It works, I think. And then the shoulders, there's a lot to talk about. So uh, I should also say, you know, none of this has a finish, uh, which we will we will get to. So the shoulder pads, right? Like this is a very character, uh, you know, it's, a, it's indicative of the character, these massive shoulder pads. They're on a hinge here inside the shoulder and then a separate hinge here and then also a swivel. So look, I know this is the way it's supposed to look, but I think for my display purposes, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not like a huge, you know, fan of this character. I mean, he's fine. Uh, I think I'm going to have, you can get this out of the way. Like I'm going to, I'm going to have uh I'm just gonna have them down, you know, and then I, you can adjust them around. But in order to talk about articulation, let's do that. So you have a hinge here, you have a ball peg here, so not my favorite. So you get the swivel all the way around, you get a little bit in and out, you get a little bit of a butterfly joint as a result, so that's interesting. And then this piece, because of the double hinges and the swivel, you manipulate around the shoulder after you've posed it. So you pose it, and then you kind of get this in the best position you can. So it's a smart move. It's the way that kind of Figuarts does shoulder pads and stuff. It's the way to do it if you're going to do it. So I think it is done well. But I just, uh, it's very clunky looking. And it's a character design thing. That's not a make toys issue. All right, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, that gets you at least 90 degrees. Let me see if I can't work that. Maybe a, maybe a little bit more, not sure. Wrist swivel, fingers articulated on a base pen knuckle. Not a lick of paint on the hands, not a lick of paint on the forearms, not a lick of paint on the bicep, not a lick of paint on the shoulders. So therefore, not a lick of paint on the arms. So that's not my favorite. Same for the other side. Pelvis, we have this little red paint and silver paint in there done well we have hip skirts we'll get those up and out of the way they're all on hinges which will bring us to universal joints for hips and they are ratcheted you get almost the full van dam and you get uh, the full monty so that's nice thigh swivel ratcheted also Knee on a single ratcheted hinge that gets you 90 degrees. Not a lick of pain on the thighs, not a lick of pain on the hips. Which brings us to the calves. We do have uh, this silver paint and red paint, both applied. Red paint's a little dull, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And then we have these flames that are tampered on the side. We have this uh, silver paint added on the wheels. And that's about it for detail. Oh, we got a little bit of uh, silver paint up in there and then this yellow paint. So, uh, you know, it's fine. The uh, ankles, we have a hinge up, so an ankle tilt up. It's a slight, slightest bit, and then a fair amount down. Heel spur here is on a hinge. And then we have, I, I, that's not an articulation point. I just mentioned it because sometimes you can get a character in a, in a dynamic pose and you kind of angle this down to get the extra balance that you need, and it's not really visible. And then we have... Uh, an ankle rocker. Now, this ankle rocker is an interesting bit of business. So, it's on the, the rocker itself is on a hinge. Can you see that? Uh, I don't want to start taking this thing apart, but yeah, let's just get to it. Can you see that? So, the rocker is on that hinge there, but there's a double hinge here, so you can manipulate it around and then you can get a pretty good angle. It's not, but it's not the, you know, it's not the best. It's not the full range, but I think it's, it's you're going to find that it works pretty well for most poses. And then, um, you know, the back of the figure, if we have this in its, you know, correct state, you know, cleans up like a champ. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I just got some really bad news. Um, so I'm still going to continue through with this. My my family, not my family, not my wife and kids. They're good to go, but. Like the, my, uh, my brothers and stuff. It's just, we put the fun in dysfunctional. So let's go through this. I will do the best I can without trying to be distracted. 
the head turns around 180. Uh, there's a couple things I'd like to do here just to kind of give me little reminders. Uh, I'd like to pull out these back bits here as uh, just indicators have them per sit perpendicular to the forearm just to remind me of something I have to do later. We can get these shoulder pads out of the way the best you can and then make sure this is collapsed all the way. Open up this windshield here. This does have blue paint on it, which is just nice to see. And then uh, open up this back bit here. And then just rotate this straight away because uh, otherwise it's, it's easy. It's easy to forget. So then we're going to rotate this chest piece all the way around and then a bit further. It does lock in position, so just be mindful of that. And then this red tab comes untabbed from the top of the shoulders, rotate that down, and then rotate the, this piece back up so that it looks a bit like that. Using this hinge here, you want to tab in this piece here into that slot in there. And then just manipulate the uh, shoulder pad, the woman's 80s business power suit out of the way. And then we'll do the same on, and it's hard to, it's hard to keep it all together, but once you get it in position, it'll stay. Uh, let's see here, okay, so we want this around because you want to open up this hinge so that you see the, the one little hollow bit there. And then tab that together and rotate these down and then we'll get this windshield up and out of the way until later which brings us to the leg so untab this flip this back section out this is on a double hinge so you can get that out of the way the foot you kind of want to just flap down and i can't even remember if you're supposed to fold this up or not i think you are and this baby blue piece here has to slide over that way so it's hard to show it's a very subtle movement but that allows you to move this piece which we talked about for the ankle rocker up into that cavity and then this piece tabs into the side of the leg here so we'll do that and then the other thing that you need to do is slide the thigh over like uh, some of the shock waves we've seen and then you just want to wrap this all the way around. This is just one of those things where it's hard to, to get everything lined up. Make sure that this is down for the clearance. And just sort it out, Mac. This uh, tab there needs to go into the corresponding slot there. And it's just a bit challenging to show all right and then this will come underneath and that'll all tab in at the end but we'll, we're just gonna show how it's done and then I'll clean it up off camera no need to waste all your time okay so untab this here again and this piece will move on a double hinge rotate the foot down slide the blue piece over rotate this hinge here up into that cavity and put that tab into that slot rotate or push the thigh over a taste and rotate and once again just a matter of getting it all to sort itself out. This piece wraps around to the back. There. So, this stuff, there's there's stuff you can't see that tabs in. This tabs into the front of the vehicle up there. I'm trying to see if I can't show you anything else. There's a piece that tabs into the forearm, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to show it all. These pieces come around. And then these pieces go underneath. And it's just a matter of sorting it all out. It's just a lot of things that have to kind of be lined up.
But let, I'm going to do it off camera and we'll get it cleaned up. That's the basic motions of it. Yep. And, and honestly, it, it didn't take that much effort. So what we got to do, and I probably should have done this earlier, is lift up this piece here and then lift up this piece here, which is the steering wheel uh, for this fella. And then we can sit him in there, I think, and kind of push that down around him. Use our double hinge, which is tight. And come around and in, and he is locked in there. The other thing that you can do is take your weapon here and use this tab and plug in there for a little fun spoiler. And let's talk about him. Pretty good. Pretty good vehicle mode. Uh, I think it would look even more amazing if the red had a finish, but really good nonetheless. Rolls like a champ. This tire is a little jammed up. You know, that, that is like, uh, well, we'll talk about it in Final Thoughts. But yeah, there it is. Moving now. Pretty good. Let's talk about size comparison. So big beefy unit, big brick of a car. And I think it looks cool. I think it looks the part. Uh, I like the stripes. It's pretty smooth and seamless for the most part. So I think they did an overall a really good job with this. Um, underneath is pretty clean. You know, good job. Uh, oh, there was one thing here. These do lift up for, I don't know if they're weapons or whatever. Infrared, who knows, force field, let's say, doesn't matter, but they do do that and then you can close them back down. So yeah, good effort, looks good. Size comparison wise, there he is with DX9's Rodimus and Make Toys Chrome Dome, so fits right in. Final thoughts wise for the negatives, I'll make this short and sweet because there's not much. One negative that I have is that this is another one of those robots where everything kind of has to line up at the end. And it's it's not that that's the biggest deal in the world. It's just that it does make it frustrating, if only temporarily, to get everything to lock in at the final step. And I think that if the transformation as a whole wasn't so smooth and well done, it wouldn't even be an issue. But because it's such a beautiful transformation, I do really enjoy it. That final step is a little obnoxious. The only other issue is that it's kind of like more so of a character thing. Like because of the clunkiness of the shoulders and the windshield, and stuff. Sometimes stuff does come untabbed or unlocked or less pretty, less clean, let's say, as you're trying to manipulate it. But then you just, once you get it in the pose you want it, you just lock it back into place and you should have no problem getting him into any sort of pose that you want. It's, it really lends itself. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a well done balance of action figure and transformer. Lastly, the only real complaint that I have, uh, the other two aren't that big of a deal, but this is the complaint, my, my real criticism of this piece is the lack of finish. This is another one of those robots that we've seen recently where it's a beautiful sculpt, it works really well, and if it just had that finish, it would push it over the top. Recently, I've been noticing that, that Make Toys have been doing more paint, I feel like. And then with Jazz, and then with this one, I feel like I've been seeing less paint, less finish, let me say, less finish. Let me be clear about that, like a finish, you know, red would have really worked, especially on the shoulder pads and on the legs. <clears throat> and I don't think it would have interfered with uh, scratching with, during transformation or anything like that. It, I think it would have done, I think it would have been, I think it would have worked out really quite well. But that's that's not the route that they chose to go. And, and as a result, it doesn't have as, as necessarily as much as that premium feel as you wish it would. Uh, and it's just it's just a growing trend. I'm just seeing more and more where companies are, are experimenting less and less with a finish, with like a, a real you know, professional looking finish of the figure at the end. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of trends out there that I'm not, I'm not really feeling these days. Like, um, you know, guys are wearing skinny jeans. You know, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that. You know, I got a buddy of mine, Pinkerton on, on Realm of Collectors and he wears skinny jeans and you know, it's just, it's just not a good look. What'd you say? What are you getting tough? I said that skinny jeans are just fine. Just fine. Shout out to Pinkerton. I'm just messing with him. He's a good dude. Him and his wife came over for dinner tonight. We had a great time, I'm sure. Hasn't happened yet, but it's just fine. My prediction. So, in closing, let me say all the positives, right? The sculpt is beautiful. Like, that, that face sculpt and that head sculpt, it's just like, it looks so cool. 
You know, it's a really cool looking figure. It has that action figure element. Like it really lends itself to poses and playability and stuff. And I really dig that. Articulation, top shelf. Everything works like you wanted to. I haven't really had any limitations. Maybe the ankle rocker, it would have been nice to get a little bit more out of it. But with the limited ankle rockers I've been seeing recently, this was still a breath of fresh air. It feels like there's die cast in there and good materials. The hardware, all the ratchets and stuff, they feel good. Cleans up well. The alt mode works has an interesting presence about it, and it has a lot of options for pose, not, not posability, it has a lot of options for display. You know, so you can go with the American version, you can go with the Japanese version, you can go with the big massive shoulder pads, you can tuck the shoulder pads around to the back. It all depends on you, your sensibilities, your display space, etc. Display base, which is like display space, which is what I meant to say, only not spell, pronounce, nor mean the same thing. Either way, let me be clear, I highly recommend this. I think it's a great figure. I think it's a great offering. I think Make Toys is two for two this year. And the only other company I put in that bracket so far, I believe is Fans Toys. So I think those two companies are two for two this year and I welcome it. I wanna see more. I hope they do more Target Masters. Uh, I would love to have a whole set done specifically by this company. I think it would be great. So yeah, a, a strong recommend from me. And the only thing that's frustrating is a lack of paint and it's possibly because if it had that finish, it might've been perfect. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.